This video is brought to you by Brigham and Women's Hospital. In this video, we will discuss the discharge instructions for patients who have recently received a permanent pacemaker. You have had a permanent pacemaker put in. A pacemaker is a small device that prevents your heart from beating too slow. Having a permanent pacemaker means that you'll have to be aware of and do things a little differently once you get home. This video will show you what you need to know. What does my pacemaker look like? This picture shows how your pacemaker looks inside your body. The pacemaker has from one to three wires and a battery pack. It is usually placed on the left side of your chest just below the collarbone. How do I take care of my incision? Let's talk about taking care of your incision. Keep the dressing covering your incision clean and dry for at least 48 hours after your surgery. Your doctor will tell you when you can take your dressing off. The dressing can be taken off by peeling off the plastic and then the gauze. Leave the white steri strips in place. They will fall off on their own in about a week. Once you've taken the dressing off, it is okay to get the incision wet in the shower. Gently pat the incision dry with a clean towel. Leave it uncovered and open to wear. You don't need to put on another bandage. Do not get the incision wet anywhere other than your own shower. This means do not go in swimming pools, hot tubs, ponds, lakes, or the ocean until the incision is completely healed. When should I call my doctor? Call your doctor's office if you have any drainage, redness, or swelling at the incision site. If you have tenderness or bruising over the pacemaker and it does not get better. Or if you get a fever over 100 degrees for 24 hours. Your medicines. Having a pacemaker means that you must know your medicines and take them the way your doctor tells you to. Make sure you carry a list of your medicines in your purse or wallet at all times. There is a medicine card in your discharge folder for you to use. Tell your dentist and other doctors that you have a pacemaker. Restarting warfarin. This may not apply to every patient. Please check with your physician or a member of your care team to see if this applies to you. If you are restarting warfarin after your surgery, make sure you ask your doctor the date to restart. You should have your INR checked often so that your blood does not become too thin. Blood that is too thin may increase the risk of bleeding around the pacemaker. Check with your doctor or a member of your doctor's team to see when to have your next INR blood test done. Your INR should be checked at least once a week for four weeks after your procedure. Do I need an identification card for my pacemaker? It is very important that you keep your pacemaker identification card with you at all times. You will be given a temporary card before you leave the hospital. You should receive a permanent card from the manufacturer in four to six weeks after you get home. What activities can I do? Once you get home, restart your normal activities unless your doctor tells you otherwise. Follow these guidelines. Do not do any vigorous activities like golf, tennis, aerobics, or weightlifting for at least four to six weeks. Do not lift your elbow on the pacemaker side above shoulder level during this time. Do not lift more than 10 pounds and make sure there is no rough contact with the pacemaker. Ask your doctor when you can begin to drive a car. 
magnetic fields, cell phones, and microwave ovens. Strong magnetic fields may interfere with your pacemaker. For your safety, avoid metal detectors, MRI scanners, and electronic security devices in stores. Airport body scanners are okay to walk through. Your pacemaker may interact with your cell phone. Hold a cell phone up to the opposite ear from the pacemaker. Don't carry a cell phone in a shirt or jacket pocket next to the pacemaker. It's okay to use a microwave oven. What is remote monitoring? You will be asked to use a pacemaker remote monitor. The monitor uses your telephone to send information about your pacemaker to your doctor and will be used as part of your routine follow-up. Before you leave the hospital, you will be given a discharge folder with information in it about your remote monitor. It's important to know that remote monitoring does not take the place of office visits with your pacemaker doctor. Never use it in place of emergency care. Let's review the discharge instructions. Having a permanent pacemaker means that you'll have to be aware of and do things a little differently once you get home. Remember these guidelines. Call your doctor if you have drainage, redness, or swelling at the incision site, tenderness or bruising over the pacemaker that does not get better, or fever over 100 degrees for 24 hours. Carry your pacemaker identification card with you at all times. Follow your doctor's directions for taking care of your incision and restarting activity. Take your medicines as prescribed and carry a list of your medicines with you at all times. Restart your warfarin medicine when your doctor tells you to do so. Know when to have your INR tests. A follow-up appointment will be scheduled for you within two to three weeks of your procedure. If you have any questions or concerns after discharge, be sure to ask your doctor or a member of your doctor's team. The phone numbers are listed on the discharge instruction sheet in your discharge folder, which you'll be given before you leave the hospital.